Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Mo, and today we have an exciting collaboration with Jeff, or RGB underscore Jeff, on Instagram, who is going to show us how to get this awesome studio look in Adobe Photoshop. Now, he's going also to walk us through how it was shot, but well, slightly. It's worth to mention that Jeff has been pouring a lot of awesome shots, so I do really recommend that you do follow him on Instagram. RGB underscore Jeff. I'll leave a link to his Instagram account in the description below, so make sure to check him out. I got some news for you. I am now officially a brand ambassador to Godox, which has been creating amazing lineup of lighting and sound products that are very, very affordable and high in quality. So this video is proudly sponsored by Godox. Okay, one more thing before I hand it over to Jeff. I'm going to print an A3 plus of this and I'm going to give it away. So make sure to check out the post or this post on my Instagram account. I'll also leave that link in the description below. So do check it out. All right, Jeff, the floor is all yours. What's going on, guys? My name is Jeff, RGB underscore Jeff on Instagram. Today, I want to show you how I made my studio picture. It's really simple. It's a lot easier than it looks. Let's get right into it. Uh, don't waste too much time letting you know how I got here with the light painting and everything. Right now we're just going to go over how to cut your background out and make yourself a studio style background. So let's get started. Let's undo this. This is what it looked like before. We got, here's the light up here. If you're still curious on how I light painted it, that's pretty much it. I. Uh, Clone stamped out a lot of stuff. Uh, let's do this so we can see. I'll just show you step by step how we got through this. Here's all the, we cloned out a lot of lights. A uh, little bit here. This is just a parking sensor, so I didn't clone that out. There's a couple parking sensors over here I didn't clone out. Don't clone out your parking sensors unless you really don't want them there. This was shot in a parking lot next to a Kia dealership. That's where all those lights came from. What, we, what we're doing is we uh, made our, a new 50% gray layer because I wanted the background to kind of look white, as you saw before. What I did, I started with a 50% gray layer. Next, I went and made a curves adjustment layer. This is the curves adjustment layer. This is what it looks like after it's finished. Let's, uh, let me show you what I did. Yeah, I get a curves adjustment layer. I drug down the uh, RGB tab to clip down here a little bit. You can do more or less, just depends on how you want your picture to look. It's a little bit darker. Here's where we were. Next, I added a little bottom gradient to kind of give it a little bit of depth. Just a, this is a blank layer. I went and grabbed my gradient tool and you just drag up, make sure it's on black. Just drag up and make it a little darker. That way it gives you a little bit of depth. So it kind of looks like you're in a room a little bit. Um, for that, what I, what I did is I made the whole picture, I used this curves layer to make the whole picture black, and then I used a, a, uh, used the mask to unmask where it was white or gray, essentially, and you just use your brush and unmask where it was white. Right here, and a little bit back here, uh, this little strip here, just to kind of make it look like there's a wall back here, you'll see it when the, the the car comes into uh, into the picture. Uh, let's see. Next, we'll go to the car. There's the car. What we did, let's step back just a bit, is we went and used our pen tool. This is very essential. Don't cut out with your lasso tool. That is not accurate enough. Uh, you really want to get close to these uh, lines here. That's what really helps you make it. Uh, or helps make the picture. You want to really want to get close to the lines. You want to cut out all where your your background is. So uh, get very familiar with the pen tool. Uh, I'll just go over it a little bit with you. Um, what you do, this is what I like to do. I'll zoom in as much as I can. Uh, it's a little bit too far. I'll go right about here. Just so you can see where your car stops and your background starts. And uh, start on a uh, I usually start on a flat edge. This is your work path. This is where you start. You go to another place, let's say right here, right before it, um, right before it curves, and you just want to drag your, 
drag your anchor tool out a little bit and just kind of see what it's doing. The less you drag it, the more your uh, line goes to the front and the more out, the further out you drag it, the further your curve comes. So just kind of like match your, uh, match your curve with this and then you'll hit option on the Mac. I'm guessing it's a uh, alt on PC. I don't use PC that much. Uh, alt and then click and then so you can start another path and then just kind of keep doing that keep going uh, just be mindful of what you're cutting out you you want to get as close to the body of the car as you can that's why I like to zoom in so you can get really really close uh, just keep on going let's go up here you kind of get the picture we're gonna you know you, you really want to get close that's what really makes this effect work really well all right I'm gonna pretend we're all the way through and we're just gonna click and match now you've made your selection say let's just pretend for today that this is the whole car you go over here make your selection your hit selection uh, your feather radius you want at zero um, you don't want to feather it because you don't want to include the background and you don't want to exclude any of your car so feather your radius at zero uh, you'll hit OK uh, when you're done now let's pretend let's say for instance this was a window or an edge that you wanted to also cut out after you select now there's your window you're gonna want to cut the window out so it's because it's also showing you the background so let's make this real quick now you hit selection now this time you still keep it at zero uh, but this time you want to add to selection so you click on add to selection and now you've got everything selected or you know everything you want selected what you really want to do is go over here to your select tab and go down to save selection and name it whatever you want to name it. I'll just name it car two because I've already got car one selected. And that will help you later on when you want to, you know, mask or unmask things around the car. Hit load selection. I already saved one as car. You got everything kind of cut out. And then I just copied this layer and pasted it onto a new layer. And that's what this is. Okay, now we have the car on our background. What, we're, what we need next is a shadow to kind of make it look a little real. So I cut, I did the same thing with our path tool, um, our pen tool, sorry, and kind of cut out the shadow and stuck it around the car here. That way it kind of looks a little bit like it's actually here. I uh, blurred a little bit down here. That's, a, I guess, a creative... Uh, you got creative license with that however you want to do that but I blurred it a little bit just to kind of make it look real uh, let's see I then made a little color reflection over here that's what I called this um, I just sampled a color over here just to make it look like this is a little bit reflective in your background so it kind of looks like there's a reflection of the car here not much I didn't go overboard with it um, you don't have to let's see did a little dodge and burning. We don't need to go over that. I fixed the wheels because the wheels were a little bit blue. There's a little blue cast on the wheels from, I guess, from the color of the pavement reflecting onto the wheels. I fixed that. The next thing we want to do, uh, what we call caustics in CGI. Just a little reflections from the light on the wheels onto the ground. That's another little creative thing. I think it, I used it to make it look a little bit more real. If you want to make them what i did was i used a curves adjustment layer and i brought the blacks all the way up to the top almost all the way up to the top just kind of made it a little white i didn't clip it here but uh then i inverted our uh, layer by hitting command or control i control if you have pc command if you have mac uh, then i used our pen tool again what i did just made a little path 
So it kind of looked like uh, a wheel, like a reflection sort of. Do the same thing. Don't, uh, oops. Just make, her, make yourself a little circle. It doesn't have to be, since we're not going all the way down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but make yourself a little circle. Hit your selection. Still don't feather it. Get your brush. Make sure you select it on white. Take your flow down a lot. I'd say about, you know, somewhere between one and five. I'd take your opacity down some too. We want this to be really light. Uh, almost, you know, very, very light. Almost non-existent. And just color it a little bit. That was probably even too much. Drag this down just a little bit. And there is your caustic, your wheel reflection. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, but I'm not going to keep it because obviously. Well, you get the idea. Uh, yeah, it's your wheel reflection. I'm going to take it away just because I don't want it there anymore. Okay. Next thing I did was I added a little bit of noise. Uh, that's a, another creative thing, personal thing. If you want to, you don't have to. Uh, I just think it adds a little texture to the picture. Once you back out a little bit, adds a little texture to it. Um, there are a million ways you can do this. What I did is I, uh, I made a new layer. I filled it with 50% gray. Now you can um, go down to noise, add noise. You can do uniform or Gaussian. It's just an idea of what it looks like. You can increase your noise like that. Let's see what this looks like. Add the noise, and then you can just drag your opacity layer down some. See, that was way too much. But, you kind of get the idea. I usually go around 20 or 30 on this, just for fun. We'll get rid of that because we already did it. And here, just a little color grade, just to give it a little color. Uh, that's another thing you can do if you want. You don't have to, but that's about it. Uh, appreciate you guys sticking around and checking us out uh didn't want to spend too much time on it it's really simple uh don't think too much about it you know if you overthink it you might not get a great result just wing it do it make it look like yours uh that's the most important thing uh, i want to give a shout out to mo for hosting me here um i look forward to keep working on them and make more tutorials as uh, time progresses and time allows uh thank you guys a lot uh, appreciate you stopping by.